Welcome. In this video about the RoboJet Floss Flying Cotton Candy Machine, I'm actually not going to talk much about the RoboJet Floss Flying Cotton Candy Machine. Instead, I'm going to talk about mixing cotton candy flossine with sugar to make cotton candy floss sugar. Uh, most people that uh, work with cotton candy, I find, actually buy premixed floss sugar. Uh, it comes in typically half gallon milk carton jugs that uh, people are used to just opening and pouring, and there's nothing wrong with buying your product that way. However, I very much prefer to mix my own for reasons that are discussed on my website blog, floatingcottoncandy.com. You have a convenience, price, better assortment of flavors, and the ability to control the freshness and texture of the material. Uh, if you read the blog article, I, I think you'll agree the benefits to mixing your own flossine or floss sugar really outweigh the, uh, the few advantages to buying a pre-mixed product. But I'll leave that for you to uh, research and read the article on your own. Uh, what stops, I think, a lot of people is just unfamiliarity with how simple it is to mix your own flossine. So I'm going to talk about the two basic techniques and uh, a couple tips that really make this incredibly simple and more effective than anything I had found on the internet when I started working with cotton candy. Now, if you're doing large bulk orders, the uh, easiest thing to do is to buy these big five-gallon jugs that you get at home improvement stores. Typically, you see them used for paint. Uh, the distinction is that you can get uh, these spin top lids, typically called gamma lids. And all you're doing is you're uh, popping on a lid combination that allows you to have a sealed uh, rubber grommet that will allow you to keep the freshness in and the moisture out. So you buy the typical container, and then you buy the special lid, you snap it on real tight, pound it on with a rubber mallet, and then you can spin lock the lid off and uh, reseal it anytime you want. So the typical method for mixing flossine is just to take uh, 25 pounds of sugar, a 25 pound bag is easily purchasable at about any store, pour the whole thing in one of these, and then add your uh, actual flossine mix. Uh, I use gold metal. There's several companies. They're probably uh, pretty equivalent. The standard mixture rate is simply one tablespoon of flossine mixture, and it's highly concentrated, so be careful. You spill this, you'll be cleaning up for a long time. One tablespoon of flossine for uh, every five pounds of sugar. So for a 25 pound bag, that's five tablespoons. I'll typically pour in about a third of the bag, put in a tablespoon or two, another third tablespoon or two finish off the 25 pound bag, put in the last tablespoon, seal this up very carefully, and then I'll take a second bucket, and I'll simply pour the mixture from one bucket to the other 10, 12, 15 times, and that pouring action mixes the material well enough, making sure that I end up with the material in the uh, container that has the uh, spin top lid. Spin the lid on, put it away for storage, take it to my event, and that's all you have to do. Pour it back and forth 10, 15 times. Now, the uh, thing is, if you're not used to mixing flossine, uh, I'll warn you, it doesn't look dark in color the way that the pre-purchased mixes do, uh, but once you put it in a machine and heat it up, it comes out looking just the same. Now, the, uh, the only thing to consider is that for a lot of people, uh, they don't want to handle 25 pounds at a time. Either that's too difficult, number one, not everybody wants to heft 25 pound buckets of sugar and pour them back and forth, and you do get a lot of dust from that process, so you want to do it outside. And two, not everybody does events large enough that they're going to use 25 pounds at once. And one of the advantages of mixing your own flossine is you can make just enough material for the event at hand so you don't have stuff sitting around that's going to absorb moisture and go stale or excess flavor that maybe you won't use again frequently enough and ends up going to waste. So as often as not, what I like doing is mixing it in smaller containers that allow me to uh, make smaller quantities. Uh, make it easier to store, transport, and also to get directly into the machine itself. So from that perspective, um, I would say probably 80% of the time I'm working in smaller batches, and for that what I will use is these Rubbermaid um, drink containers that actually get really bad reviews online as drink containers. They're called um, uh, spill mates or something of that nature. And, and I should also say there are links to uh, everything I use on my website 
floatingcottoncandy.com, but they're not publicly visible. I have a, a special page called the Robo Boss Success Guide, and if you visit the site, fill out a little form for more information and just say you'd like links to the uh, success guide, uh, I'm happy to share it. But I don't like uh, having it publicly available where competitors or just anybody can see it. Um, I don't sell these materials, but I do keep the links active so that you can find all of this without me having to specify links in a video. and simply because those links often change and so I have to update the site pretty frequently. Now having said that, these uh, drink containers actually get really pretty poor reviews online because they don't seal for liquid very well, uh, so I have read, but they work fine for sugar with uh, one caveat. In order to keep moisture out, what I have done is I found that if you get a 60 millimeter o-ring used uh, typically for industrial or automotive purposes, you can slide it over there and then that gets you a nice tight moisture seal and you can get these really pretty cheap online something like a, you know a dime a piece or a quarter a piece and again I have a link to where you can get a 10 pack for like two dollars and fifty cents delivered so with that it actually seals the sugar in very well in order to mix this up there's really two ways you can do it and both require a larger <laughs> Rubbermaid uh, drink serving container. Um, the two ways that you can do it is one, you can fill this container with sugar, which will be about four pounds, depends on the humidity, because of course sugar will absorb humidity and change the weight. Or you can simply uh, draw a line on this container at the five pound mark. Um, there's no right answer, it's whatever you're, you're most comfortable with. I typically will uh, just hand pour into this. I know where the four pound and the five pound mark are. Uh, my, my markings have worn off, but I do it frequently enough that, uh, that I just know where the, the lines are and, and there are actually line ingredients on these, uh, on these containers. So it's very easy to do. I'll use a very large scoop, typically a big glass um, two, uh, two and a half cup, three cup um, measuring cup, go right into a 50 pound bag of sugar, uh, but in order to get it in here without spillage, what you need to do is to get a funnel, but you, you don't want a kitchen funnel, because those are made for kitchen uses and usually have very small openings. So go to um, any big box store that sells automotive supplies and get a funnel that's made for automobiles, typically for oil or transmission fluid, so you can get a really big funnel and they will typically taper down more than you need. So for $2, $2.50 at a Walmart or a Murray's or a Pep Boys, you can buy one of these funnels and just uh, cut it off, shear it off, so that it fits your container about how you want. Because I want a really big opening so I can pour sugar through there real fast. So I can take a take big old cup of sugar and with just a, a couple of scoops, like three or four, I can get four or five pounds of sugar in here real easily. Then all we need to do is take the sugar and mix it with the flossine. So the reason I use two of these is if you wanted to fill this up, and I think this is what a lot of people do, is they'll fill this up, it's four pounds of sugar, then we just want to transport it into the larger container. And the larger container, the mixer mate, I think they call the larger one, and there's a link on my website. The advantage to having the larger container is that it allows room for mixing. Now, if you're doing five pounds, one tablespoon, if you're doing four pounds, well, there's three uh, teaspoons and a tablespoon. So for uh, four pounds, what I do is two heaping teaspoons. So that gets me about the right mixture, and this isn't rocket science, so you don't have to be perfect. Close does count. Two heaping teaspoons, put the lid on. Uh, the interesting thing is this has a pour spout, but I never use the pour spout. I just use this as a lid. But what makes this really convenient is four pounds and even five pounds leaves plenty of empty space in this and it's got a handle. So I'm going to be quiet while I shake this because my voice will sound weird. But with just a couple of rotations, a few shakes, a few spins and turns, I, I've almost instantly got four pounds really well mixed. And because it has a large mouth, it's easy to get right back in to the smaller container. And, and smaller containers are the ones that I use for storage. Now this hole was cut to the size of this container and now I can immediately refill all four pounds right back into this container. You'll notice that uh, when you do this the interesting thing is the sugar actually has to be tapped into place because some settling needs to occur in order to get the sugar to settle back down. So four pounds went in four pounds came back out and uh, as I say the color isn't going to look very dark on the video camera and it doesn't actually look very dark 
when properly mixed in real life. But even talking on a video, it takes uh, 10, 12, 15 seconds to mix up four pounds of sugar. As long as you've got a big funnel and a big scoop, you can uh, pour it into your large container, shake it a few times, give it a couple rotations, pour it back in. And the reason these are so ideal is that there's no air in here. So I fill them right to the brim. No air means no moisture, humidity collects. Two, the flip top has a opening that is ideal for filling cotton candy machines. Whether you use a RoboFloss or not, this fills in and I don't need to use scoops and risk spillage. This will fit the nozzle of pretty much any cotton candy machine. I filled gold medals, RoboJet flosses, Paragons, everything with it. And uh, when you're done pouring, you can seal it. So if you tip it over, no spillage. This uh, really aids productivity, spoilage, transportability. It's the only way to mix and carry and transport flossine. And again, with the O-ring added, uh, I find it does an excellent job of keeping moisture out. So the days of stirring, pouring, measuring, I know that when I fill this, it's four pounds. I know that's just a little bit more than two rounded teaspoons. Dump the whole thing in here, put the lid on, shake it a couple times, pour it back in here, tap it to settle, ready to go. And then for transporting these, you don't have to do this, but I, I've searched around. Uh, I have many hours of research into this. Perfect container for me are these uh, hefties. Uh, there's links to them, again, on the website. I don't remember what they call this model. But it's a, it's a specific one that has a flip top lid with a gasket to keep moisture out. And it holds four of these just, just ideally. So uh, I used to carry like eight or ten of them in a larger container. But if you've got a long ways to go from your vehicle to uh, your event, and sometimes you do, uh, eight or ten of them, uh, that, that adds up in weight. So being able to have four of them in packages, and then I'll usually have a couple of these tubs with different flavors in each one, with a flip top lid that has a one snap in front, nice comfortable built and handles in the side. So I've got basically 16 pounds of floss in one little container in four separate packs, which is nice because of the humid day. I'm only opening one sub-container, one four-pounder at a time. And again, each one has a uh, O-ring for sealing and a little snap lid at top. I don't need scoops anymore. Pours right in the top of the bowl, lid closes back up. Those are perfect for fitting on cart shelves anywhere you want. And if you knock it over, there's no spillage. The only math you've got to remember is if you're going to pour in five pounds, it's one tablespoon level. If you're going to do four pounds, which is what these hold, it's two rounded teaspoons. Doesn't take uh, any memory more than that. The only thing I'm not showing you here is the large glass uh, scoop that I use to uh, get the four or five pounds in here. Uh, at first, you'll probably want to get a kitchen scale. And uh, if you want to do five pounds, measure a line on here so you know where it's at. After your first couple times, that marker will rub off, but you'll remember where it's at. I can tell you that the, uh, that the Rubbermaid Mixer Mate bottles are essentially four pounds. You don't have to measure that. You can take my word for it when you fill them full and tap them down. That's four pounds worth of uh, sugar, which will soon be sugar flossine. Uh, I don't think if I left anything out. So you can go 25 pounds at a time, and that's five tablespoons. Get at least two of these so you can pour back and forth and mix and make sure you get the gamma seals so that uh, the spin locks, because prying off the old-fashioned lids like uh, they typically sell at the home improvement stores, tough on the fingers and, and frankly, doesn't seal that well. So get your gamma lids. Two buckets to do 25 pounds, or as I say, uh, more conveniently, the little assortment of uh, Rubbermaid and, uh, and, and hefty materials I have here allows you to really pre-mix, pre-sort, pre-carry, and uh, keep all your materials dry. So those are my tips on mixing flossine, and, and when it's this easy, uh, it's, it's, it's why I don't purchase pre-mixed flossine anymore. Uh, again, there's a blog article on floatingcottoncandy.com that explains the math behind how much money you save in this process. But frankly, that's just a secondary benefit. Being able to mix just the flavor and color that I need for the event on hand, having it in much more convenient containers, more resistant to moisture and water, easier transportability, 
Um, that's really what motivates me. The cost savings is pretty significant, uh, but hey, it's still sugar, so there's not a lot of money involved, but um, it's really the professionalism and the flexibility. And if you're working solo, as I do in most events that I do, the uh, enhanced productivity of being able to quickly access the flavor I want and pour it directly into the machine without worrying about any spillage whatsoever, uh, I think actually earns me a higher rate on a per hour basis as well. So I hope you find this video useful. Again, ordinarily talking about my favorite Robo Jet Floss cotton candy machine, but in this case, this information applies to pretty much any machine on the market. Have a good day, and I hope to see you next time. Be sure to visit floatingcottoncandy.com and ask for the link to my success guide if you'd like links to all of these uh, materials and other information that uh, most of it I don't sell, but I do keep track of what the best products are and the best sources for pricing on supplies that cotton candy vendors need. Thank you.